On today's episode, we are going to take a look at Slack Technologies, ticker WORK. Um, they just reported earnings and this company is down over 25%, close to 25% after reporting its earnings and after its peak on September 30, which was $34.30. Right now is sitting at 20, uh, close to $26. So on today's episode, we're gonna be, it's going to be broken down into the following. First, we're just going to take a quick overview of the company. What is, what is the product they do? What is their valuation? And who are some of their competitors? After that, we're going to take a look at some of the earnings news followed by some financial numbers and at the end of the video i'm obviously going to give my thoughts on the company so like always if you are new to my channel if you are a long-term investor if you want to learn more about growth stocks make sure to hit that subscribe button to all my returning viewers thank you so much for the support it truly means a lot to me and if you guys ever want to get in contact with me, YouTube comments, Twitter, you can find me on my Discord channel. You can find me on my newsletter at josenaharo.com. All of this, which is free. But remember, I am by no means a professional, so none of this should be taken as advice. Make sure to talk to a financial advisor before making any decisions. So let's get started. All right, guys, I know it's been some time since I posted. It's probably been like five, six days since I last posted, but it feels like forever. So, so all my return viewers, thank you guys so much for coming back. And sorry about that, that gap. Um, actual work work has been kicking my butt right now. Um, and it's crazy. In the past week or five days that I've been gone, we've seen the market crash. We've seen the market go back up. And today we see another market crash. So in a matter of a few days, everything has happened. I hope everybody's doing well. hope your, your investments are doing good. Remember, this is a long-term game. So for me, even when the market was down 10 14%, um, it doesn't change much about my investment style. At the end of the day, I will continue to invest. And a huge shout out to all those that are supporting the channel with the YouTube membership. Um, you can see the join button somewhere down here. And again, all the information that I provide, it's free. I will never charge anybody for, for any, any form of information that I do. Um, but if, for those people that believe that I bring some form of value to them, they have joined. And thank you so much for, for that support as well. All right. So like I mentioned, right, today's episode, we are taking a look at Slack. So Slack... Um, technology ticker WORK for all my podcast listeners right now has a market cap of about $14.8 billion. Uh, so we can see this is it's not a small company. We've seen smaller companies in the, in, in the videos that I do. Sometimes we see them in the low in the low billions. But right now we're in the mid teens and we can see this company had, had did peak at about $34.30. And since then, the correction and earnings have just I, I do believe it's a mixture of both, of both the correction and the earnings have driven this stock price down by about $8, dropping it close to 25%. So in a matter of a few days it, from its peak, it lost a quarter of its valuation. And let's just take a look at year-to-date price performance. At, at the beginning of the year, this company was sitting at $23 at its peak. And actually, that wasn't its peak. Its peak was sometime in mid, in June but let's take a look at that peak in September. It was up 49%. After the current corrections, it's only up 12% for, for compared to year to date, which again, is not a bad a bad return in my opinion. Um, in, in a matter of eight months, you don't see nine months, you don't see that kind of return usually, even with the overall market. Let's just take a look. I just want to see, I'm, now I'm curious um, what the overall market has returned year to date. So year to date, the overall market has returned 2%. So right, so in you can see investing in, in Slack on ticker work, um, you are still beating the market him had invested at the beginning of the year. All right, so first, let's find out about Slack. Let's try to understand what is the product that this company does and and try to understand what is the market they're hitting. So the best place to obviously do this is to go to the company's website. You can usually go to the solutions and, and see how they help. For example, here they have solutions for remote work, distance learning, for financial services. So you can understand more about what they do. Another great tool to, to understand what a company does is to take a look at their earnings presentations. And they usually have an about section of the company. So Slack offers a secure enterprise grade environment that can scale with the largest companies in the world. It's a new layer of business technology. Um, 
stack where people can work together more effectively, connect all their other software tools and services, and find their information they need to do their best work. Slack is where it happens. So Slack is pretty much this huge, I want to say it's this huge online community where let's say you're working with the team, you guys can interact within Slack. And the great thing about Slack, it has interactions with multiple, it has uh, integrations, not interactions, integrations with multiple software. So they have, for example, if we take a look at some of their resources, I'm sure they have somewhere here, some of the apps that they integrate with. So they integrate with like Google Drive, with Zoom. So if you want to do a straight Zoom call with someone, you don't have to go open up the Zoom, uh, the Zoom software and then do all the invitations. You can just do everything through Slack. You can do your Outlook, your Cisco, your Microsoft, um, all your daily tools like your calendar, essential apps like Salesforce, Blue Jeans, Blue Jeans Workday. So you can see it is um, it's integrated with so many different applications, and that's what makes it amazing, right? It Slack itself is it, more like the tool that brings all these applications together. So you, as a worker, um, don't have to go through multiple multiple walls to use other applications to talk to your team. So overall, the I believe the overall product is pretty cool. I, I do believe it can help effectively how a team manages. Um, so now let's take a look at some of their competitors. One of Slack's biggest competitors is Microsoft. Microsoft Teams has a huge advantage that many bears of Slack say. The biggest advantage of Microsoft Teams is it usually comes in the package with my Office 365. So what's the point of team uh, of some other of the company going outside their way? Most companies, I'm pretty sure almost all companies are using Office 365. So they have teams available to them. So if they have teams available to them already with that package, why would they go out and and talk and find some other platform that does something that Microsoft Teams does? And obviously Slack, we're going to take a look. They are growing in revenue. So the bull case of here is, hey, even though Microsoft Teams is a thing and and it's being offered by Office 365, companies are still going outside of their Office 365 and, and set, up a, a, set up a partnership with Slack. So now that we took a quick look at what Slack does, let's take a look at their earnings and see why this company is down so big. So let's take a quick look at some of their highlights and let me zoom in for you guys. So earnings were on September 8th of 2020, so about two days ago. And Slack reported gap earnings per share of negative 13 cents. And like we like we see right now, it is not profitable. Revenue for this company is $215 million. So that right now is up almost 49% compared to the same time last year. So that's a huge beat in, in revenue. Um, unfortunately, calculated billings of 200, uh, were $218 million. And this was lower than expectation. Expectation was $226 million. All right, so let's take a quick look at some more of their highlights. So another great highlight that we see is work increased their full year revenue guidance. Um, so right now they're seeing a guidance of 870 million to 876 million in sales. Last time it was 855 to 870. So now their bottom end of their revenue is close to what they estimated was their top end uh, a, a few a few quarters ago. So that's a huge thing. To see. whenever a company increases their guidance, it, it, to me it's always a bullish scenario. Um, and this is way better than the overall consensus, which is 850 million. So we can see Slack is doing better than they thought they would, and it's also be, uh, doing better than what the analysts expected. Um, at the moment, they still are expected to lose about 13 cents to 14 cents a share this year. So this company is not expected to be profitable anytime soon. Some other new highlights is the company did add 8,000 new paid customers, and this is bringing paid customers to over 130,000, and this is above the 128,000 that was expected for them. And then paid customers with an annual recurring revenue, which is greater than, 100, than 1 million, has increased from 49 last year to eight from la 49 in last year's quarter to 87. So that's a big jump, all close to 100% increase 
in customers that pay over one million dollars a year we can see we, we can be like jose what the heck happened how is this company doing so great in revenue it's we're seeing an increase in new paid customers we're seeing an increase in in customers that make more than one million dollars in revenue over a year so why did this stock price drop um and, and right that is crazy this stock like we mentioned dropped about 26 percent and to to be honest one doesn't ever have the answer the true answers for this it could be a multiple reasons but some of those reasons i are, are going to be the following the first reason was just the overall market correction some of these stock prices have gone up dramatically in in the past six months and unfortunately that has made a lot of a lot of investors especially new investors believe that the market only goes up and no that's not the case the market is a very volatile world and that's why we have we have the ability to get rewards in in this in in in, in the investing world because there are risk so the volatility volatility for me is something that i don't consider a risk but many others might so the first thing is i do believe most of these stocks have been stretched a lot even though they have been stretched a lot though i might be saying that it does not give me a bearish scenario like i, I do dollar cost averaging so every week i will always continue to buy into the market because at the end of the day you don't know how much that market is going to be stretched and how much if it ever does a pullback how much of a pullback it's going to be is it even going to be a big pullback so that's too much forecasting, too much playing with the crystal ball, crystal ball for me. So I dollar cost average, and every week I put money in the market. But I do believe the overstretching, overstretch played a big part in that pullback. The second reason I do believe is the overall disappointment in calculated billings. Um, and the third thing is slack right now only showed a 50 percent revenue growth and 50 percent is a crazy number if i may say so but when people start comparing all SaaS companies to to big guys like zoom right zoom i think um showed 355 percent growth so when you start comparing it to other companies like that it also you you increase that valuation and when it doesn't meet those expectations you get that pullback so i do believe a lot of people are trying to compare so many of these SaaS companies to zoom and expecting to see triple digits a 355 percent growth is something you don't see so i don't expect this happening in in, in multiple companies as the uh, as the earnings progress for quarter three this company also did give guidance slack forecast is about 222 million to 225 million in revenue that's up 32 to 33 percent again 32 to 33 percent year-to-year growth is amazing i mean you don't see many companies doing that and i feel like seeing people leaving leaving this investment again i still haven't given my thought um and i'm honestly still on defense of what i want to do but seeing a 32 33 percent guidance company um and people are selling off because they don't think that's enough i think that's just the ultimate greed where they're trying to find companies out there expecting that 100 percent growth 200 percent growth so sometimes this kind of gives opportunities to those that believe in the company all right so next what i want to take a look at is forecasted growth for this company the first thing i want to mention is this company is not expected to be profitable anytime soon and uh, it's in the next three years it's still expected to actually be in the red and that's not something and that's not something i like to see if I, I i do like to invest in growth companies and growth companies are those i consider growing faster than 15 percent on average within the next three years annually um but at the same time i'm looking for companies that are expected to make money unless i truly truly believe in a company it's very hard for me to invest in something that's not expected to be profitable within the next three years so slack is expected to grow its revenue 26.4 percent annually on average for the next three years this doesn't mean every year is going to grow 26.4 percent um we can say one year probably go like 23 one year might grow like 26 one year might grow like 22 percent but on average if you put the average between that it'll be close to 26 percent um so we can see this is growing faster than the industry and faster than the market remember i did mention this company is not expected to be profitable anytime soon and that is unfortunate 
All right, so next, let's take a look at revenue growth for this company annually. So in 2019, this company grew 58, close to 58%. In 2018, it grew 81% year over year. And in 2017, it grew 110% year over year. And you may be like, Jose, this company just went IPO. How the heck do you know what they grew in the past years? Well, they show you filings before they go public. Um, and that's how you understand the type of revenue they collected. So this this quarter they did this year they mentioned that they were going to collect revenue of close to 855 million dollars and that is compared to 630 so that's closer to about a a, a 40% let's take a look at how much growth that is so that's over 40% year over year growth for this year as well so even though it is slowing down compared to previous years it's still a very very strong grower all right, and now let's take a look at the margins for this company. And we can see, right, pro this company's profit margins in the past quarters, 10, uh, let's, let's take a closer look, are improving a bit, but not by much. In this most recent earnings, their profit margins are still down 34%. And the previous quarter were 37%, and the quarter before that was 48.9%. So we are seeing a small improvement, but still nowhere near profitable. Gross margins for this company is 86.8%, but that's normally the case for software companies. Software companies tend to have a very, very high um, gross margins because once they create the product, um, it, their, their software is usually a one-time expense in theory. From there on, it's just research and development. So I want to see where this company loses most of its money. And, and let's take a look at their income statement. So in their income statement, we can see this quarter, they made $215 million in revenue. Cost of revenue was only about $28 billion. Um, but look, their total operating expenses, this is total operating expenses includes research and development, which is what the, they pay the engineers to make sure their software is up to date, to make sure they add new uh, new features to it. Sales and marketing, pretty much what it stands for is for a team that goes out and tries to market the platform, tries to sell it to grab more customers. Just those two those two expenses alone are over 200 million dollars so just those two alone make this company already negative in profits i can argue right that those are needed platforms but at the end of the day um unless this company's revenue um starts to increase a lot more throughout the throughout the years like we said we're not going to be profitable anytime soon now I want to take a look at their balance sheet. If you guys have been watching my channel, you know this is my favorite document. I feel like especially a company that is not expected to be profitable anytime soon, I'm going to be very hard on them here. I, I want to make sure that they have plenty of cash to pay off all that debt. So right now they have cash of about $136 uh, $1.3 billion in cash and about $200 and, and about $200 million dollars in in marketable securities so at the end of the day they have about 1.5 billion dollars in quick cash um that's a nice amount of cash and that makes up a huge portion of this company's total assets so 1.5 billion now if we take a look at this company's total long-term liabilities we're gonna see it's this convertible senior notes that's about 630 million dollars i don't see any other long-term debt with them at the moment so right now they have about 1.5 billion dollars in cash and they have 1.6 billion dollars in 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 long-term debt in, in form of, of of senior notes so even if they pay off that off they still have about 900 million dollars in cash and that to me is it's a pretty strong balance sheet i, I want to say right even their total amount of cash their total amount of cash is enough to pay off their total liabilities of 1.3 billion dollars and that's that about 400 million dollars is deferred revenue which is something i consider a fake liability so slack definitely has a very very strong balance sheet and one that if one that again i'm not a huge fan that it's not profitable at the moment but because i'm seeing this type of of cash balance sheet it makes me a little bit more less worry if i was to invest in slack right because it tells me hey even though this not this company is not making money they still have cash in the bank to be able to survive while they're working more on becoming a profitable business so now let's take a look at my thoughts and let me take a look here in Seeking Alpha. I want to take a look at the forward price to sales ratio.
So the forward price to sales ratio for this company as of January 22nd of 2022 is about 12.73. If I may be honest, 12.73 is a, is a lot better than I see most software companies out right now. I do believe this correction has helped out with valuations a bit. Normally, I really love to see something below 10 and to see somewhere closer to 12.73, it, it's, it's starting to get better, right? Um, but what do we see about Slack? Some of the negative things we saw is one, their billings, their billings right now ha did not meet expectations. Two, they're not expected to be profitable anytime soon. But what were some of the positive things we saw? Their revenue growth is still pretty amazing. They have a pretty strong balance sheet um, and they have increased guidance and their guidance are beating estimates. Um, so at the end of the day, I, I, I don't believe I'm going, I, I, I'm not, I, I, I can't say. Um, this one's a pretty tricky one. I, I do believe, let me start off with this then. Right now I have three tiers of stocks. I have tier ones, which are my most, my biggest conviction stocks that i believe the most in tier two are are tier three are are the companies that i do believe are undervalued right now and could provide great results at better than the market but they're not um they're either not the leaders right now in the market and then tier two is somewhere between those two so let me say this slack right now at the moment will never be a tier one stock for me and that's just my opinion right for me it might be a tier one stock for other people to me it's it's unlikely to be a tier two but it could be it could end up being a tier two it definitely has potential to be tier three because it's not a leader in its market right now and it's still providing great revenue growth um, unfortunately it's not profitable so because it's not profitable i wouldn't go in too too heavy on it at the moment but it did have a very strong balance sheet a balance sheet it had a very strong revenue growth and the overall product is i think it's one that can continue to grow in this market now outside of that let me see if i wanted to enter a position in slack slack wouldn't be one that i would go all front heavy in at once i would never do that usually the only time i would do that would be with my tier one stocks with anything else i dollar cost average if i wanted to to enter a position in slack that's how i would do it especially right now right now i i do believe if i was if i was a little more bullish in slack right now would be the time to enter we see a nice correction happening um we see right now a nice forward price to sales ratio and even though it is not going to be profitable it has those great bullish flags at the end of the day it also has some bearish flags with it so that's it for today's episode i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you think and i'm actually thinking of doing peloton and um what was the other one that just chewy they just reported earnings today so if you guys want me to do a video on them make sure to let me know on the comments so take care guys have a good night and see you next time